Bow hunting does so much to enrich people's lives, but one of the greatest is bringing people together. I met Ryan Harder a few years back on one of my first black bear hunts, and since then we've hunted almost every year together. A couple of years ago in Moose Camp, Ryan told me about his mountain caribou hunts with Northwest Territories Outfitters. This year I finally made it happen, and it turned out to be one of the most incredible hunts of my life. After we arrived at base camp, we didn't waste a whole lot of time before we flew out for spike camp. We had already lost two days to weather, so everybody was pretty anxious to start hunting. We are finally here at camp in the Northwest Territories. After sitting in hotels for two days because of weather, we couldn't fly out. We are finally here. We just choppered over. We've got a great campsite. We're camping high so we can glass down. Um, we're expecting most of the mountain caribou to be below us, but we can't hunt for about 12 hours. Um, once you fly, you have to sit tight. You can't leave camp for 12 hours. So. We try to time things up so we can get in, set up camp, maybe make some coffee tonight, and then uh, hit the sack, burn our 12 hours while we sleep, wake up in the morning and start hunting. But every time we're in the North Country, it fuels something in you. Once you're here, and, and I don't know, you know, obviously it's beautiful, but the smells, the sounds, it's just, it, it's something that fires you up. It, there's nothing like it in the world. Um, I have a good feeling none of us are gonna get any sleep tonight. But I also have a good feeling when the sun does rise, we're going to be ready to go. So here we are, mountain caribou. I've never hunted caribou before. It's my first time. I'm hunting with one of my best friends in the outdoor industry, Ryan Harder. He's been bugging me for years to get up here and do this. So uh, this is a special one for me. I know it is for him. Hopefully, uh, the end of this eight days, we'll be coming home with a, with a caribou in the cooler. This segment is brought to you by Matthews Archery, introducing the 2018 Triax. Stealth is lethal. It's our first morning here in the territories. We woke up to frost and five caribou in camp. We finally got our stuff together, hiked up to a nice little high vantage point where we could glass. And we've got four big bulls in front of us. And we've got two giants about a thousand yards away behind me. I don't think we're gonna waste a whole lot of time. The wind's in our favor. It's blowing this way, the bulls are that way. So I think we're gonna make a move right out of the chute. There's a knob right there. I'd like to get to. We'll just, they're feeding away from us, not fast, they're just, that's the way they're going. We'll just bird dog them, tell either they bed, then we can make a play when they bed, or if they feed into a dish where we can get up on them and get them behind them. Okay. I 
told Ryan from the start that I was going to give it everything I had with the Matthews, but if it came down to it, I wasn't opposed to using the rifle either. Playing catch up with these bulls all morning, it was so tempting to ask for the rifle. But it was only day one, and if I was going to use a gun, it was going to be on the Giant. This segment is brought to you by Hawk Tree Stands and Accessories, Hunt from Above. decided to kind of screw our plan up. They got up, started to move off. The good news is that the bulls moved closer to camp. The bad news is they moved up. So they dropped into a cut. We got to go find them. We chased those bulls all day, coming close a few times, but in the end, it just wasn't close enough. Later that afternoon, we closed the gap on two smaller bulls, but neither was really what I was looking for. Thank you. 
This segment is brought to you by Vapor Trail Archery, innovators of limb-driven technology and the Pro-V Arrow Rest. Quit your crying. Vortex Optics and Accessories, the force in optics. Day two here in Northwest Territories. I haven't even had time to put my wireless mic on. We've already spotted a giant bull. It's probably the biggest bull we've seen since we've been here. So we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna make some boot tracks, see if we can get on this guy. All right, All right here's the deal with this bull. We've made it about a thousand yards off that mountain and he is way bigger than we thought. We're definitely gonna try with the bow. We're gonna give it everything we can with the bow, but this guy is a once in a lifetime bull. Ryan has a rifle, and if for some reason he boogers, I'm not going to hesitate to grab the rifle on a bull of this caliber. He's that for the bull. For a moment, I thought this was a done deal, but then something happened that sent this bull into a freak out mode. And before I could even ask, yeah. Ryan handed me the rifle. Freaking monster. <laughs> Day two, and we just put down a giant. We glassed him right at first light. Well, right when we first started glassing, and Ryan knew immediately. How far away do you think he was then? 1,400. 1,400, 1,500 yards. And Ryan said, This is the biggest bull you're ever going to see. We had the bow. I made the decision if he didn't give me a chance with the bow, we we're gonna use the rifle, and I'm glad I did. He started to feed the opposite way. If he crests that hill, we may never see him again, so. Let's go get our hands on this monster. This is a dream come true. Northwest Territories Outfitters. When I was a kid, watching Jim Shockey and Tom Miranda, caribou was what got me hooked on hunting. I always thought it was the coolest animal in the world. And now I finally have one of my own. Let's go get our hands on them. Dude, <laughs> thank you. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you know I, we i may be wrong but yesterday on that knob i believe it was we were glassing from the top of the mountain you said there's a big bull with a white mane white antlers are just sticking out and you said he is huge i mean there's a lot of bulls around here certainly could be a different one but what do you think i mean you think it's the same bull i, I think it is I, with the way this velvet's hanging off right yeah he had velvet hanging off I mean, that's an absolute dream come true. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. Oh, day two. There's nothing better than being out here too. I mean, the right time of year, colors are changing. It's just gorgeous. Would you say a hundred miles from the nearest road? Oh, at least. 
At least. Maybe, maybe more. <laughs> Ryan Harder, you're the man. So that makes bear, caribou, we've moose hunted together. What's next, man? We'll figure something, we'll figure something out. out. <laughs> <laughs> what a tank. So we've had a few minutes to kind of soak it all in, take a good look at this caribou. I mean, he's, he's a world-class trophy, something I never, ever thought I'd go home with. But uh, we're waiting on Ryan. He's grabbing a uh, sap phone and gonna let the guys know back at camp grabbing his knives and things and you just get a minute to kind of reflect on really how special this is we're uh we're sitting high above the keel river in the northwest territories you know working hard working as hard as you've ever worked climbing up and down this stuff it's slippery there's nothing to grab a hold of it's steep but it's beautiful you're eating mountain house every night you're shivering when you go to sleep but then you have a moment like this and you do it all again tomorrow. This is the epitome of hunting to me. I mean, getting out here, working hard, sleeping in the tent, eating crummy food, grabbing your water from a stream. Feels pretty good. So here's the kicker. We didn't know this was gonna happen this fast. And in two or three days, moose season opens and I have a rifle moose tag in my pocket. So, now the decision needs to be made. Do we move something for a couple days? Or do we go home happy hunters with a world-class caribou? It might be one I sleep on tonight. But I have a feeling we're gonna be hunting moose on Friday. Well, we've made three or four approaches. And we've been within range, but we keep getting ourselves into positions where the willows are just a little bit too high. I mean, there's spots where these things are two feet tall, and there's spots where they're six, eight feet tall, so we gotta be mindful of the wind, gotta be mindful of the second moves. We're just trying to find a spot where we can get a good look at them. If you'd like to see behind the scenes footage and photos from today's episode, make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.